tonight. Our special coverage as Israeli officials detain numerous displaced Palestinian women and girls without any charges against them. Assalamu alaikum and good evening. This is Muslim News Canada on Muslim Network TV. I'm Aisha Ashraf. Today is the 56th day since Israel started its war on Palestine. The head of the United Nations Agency for Palestinian Refugees is calling Gaza as, quote, hell on earth as Israel continues its deadly bombardment. Israel's war has caused 22 hospitals and 46 healthcare centers in Gaza to shut down. Disturbing footage shared on Israeli social media accounts documents the bombing of a UN agency for Palestinian refugees school in Beit Hanun, North Gaza. Gaza's health ministry says Israeli forces have entered Kamal Adwan Hospital after besieging and shelling it for days. Israeli forces are preventing entry or exit from the hospital. They are reportedly firing on medical workers and patients. The UN Health Agency aims to set up mobile labs in Gaza to analyze samples for diseases. Humanitarian aid entering Gaza is insufficient. This is causing challenges in distribution amid what is described as the worst humanitarian catastrophe in Gaza. A UN expert is warning of widespread hunger among Palestinians in Gaza. Hamas's military wing says it has used mortar shells in attacks against Israeli troops. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says the Palestinian Authority will not control Gaza post-war. He says neither Hamas will be controlling the enclave. In response, Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas is accusing Netanyahu of undermining the Oslo Accords. The Oslo Accords, an agreement between Israel and Palestine, was signed by the two countries in 1993. In the agreement, Israel accepted the Palestinian Authority as a representative of the Palestinians. At the time of writing, 18,412 Palestinians have been killed by Israeli strikes. Israel's revised death toll now stands at 1,147. And in related news, in a notable shift, President Joe Biden has said today that Israel's indiscriminate bombing of Gaza is eroding support for the country. He has urged Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to reconsider his approach. Biden's comments shared during a fundraising event for his re-election campaign mark his most critical assessment of Netanyahu's handling of the Gaza conflict. This stands in stark contrast to Biden's earlier expressions of support both verbally and politically, for the Israeli leader since the onset of war. The Executive Committee of Harvard University's Alumni Association has issued a resounding vote of confidence in the university's president, Claudine Gay. Gay has been facing calls for resignation for allegedly failing to denounce threats of violence against Jewish students. Gay, along with two other university presidents, attended a congressional testimony last week. The accusations of failing to address anti-Semitism on campuses has led to the resignation of University of Pennsylvania President Liz McGill on Saturday. The Harvard Corporation, the university's governing body, is expected to announce its decision regarding Gay soon. This show of support from Harvard's community could help President Gay retain her position. Hundreds of faculty members have signed a petition praising gay skills and fostering dialogue in the wake of Israel's aggression on Palestine. Over 800 black alumni commend her commitment to combating anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, and racism. While some prominent leaders are calling for gay's resignation, the executive committee of the MIT Corporation has expressed its unwavering support for gay. Journalists in the U.S.'s newsrooms are being muted for voicing criticism for Israel or expressing solidarity for Palestinians. They are facing termination, suspension, or sidelining. Prominent media outlets like the New York Times, Associated Press, BBC, and Los Angeles Times have all seen incidents of journalists silenced for their opinions. Since October 7th, numerous incidents have been reported. Among those fired is journalist Gossam Rod. German media Axel Springer fired Rod for questioning the company's policy on Israel. 38 Los Angeles Times journalists have been banned from covering Gaza. 
They have been critical of media coverage and Israel's targeting of journalists in an open letter. The BBC has removed a six Arab journalists from airtime over an alleged anti-Israel bias on social media. Pulitzer Prize winning journalist Mona Chalabi has been unable to secure additional work from the New York Times since the conflict began. Experts say these actions are casting a chilling effect across the U.S. media landscape. European Union's top diplomat, Joseph Borrell, has declared the situation in Gaza as catastrophic and apocalyptic. Borrell says Gaza's destruction is surpassing even that of Germany in World War II. Borrell's comments come after a meeting with EU foreign ministers. He has expressed deep concern over the immense civilian casualties caused by Israel's aggression on Gaza. Borrell says Israel's approval of 1,700 more housing units in Jerusalem is viewed as a violation of international law by the EU states. He's proposing sanctions against West Bank settlers engaged in violence against local Palestinians. Borrell, however, acknowledges the lack of unanimity among the 27 EU governments on issuing sanctions. Borrell says civilian suffering is an unprecedented challenge for the international community. He says civilian casualties account for up to 70% of all deaths in Palestine since the onset of Israel's war. The destruction of Gaza's buildings, he says, is on par with or even greater than that faced by German cities during World War II concerning the proportion of scale. The Israeli army has been accused of arbitrarily detaining numerous Palestinian women and girls from Gaza since the onset of war. These women have been detained while fleeing with their families from northern Gaza to the south through Salah al-Din Road. Among the imprisoned women are mothers who have been separated from their infant babies. The females have been detained without any charges. It is not known how many Israeli prisons are holding these women. Families are anxiously awaiting information about their loved ones. There are reports that at least 142 females, including senior women and infants, are currently held in Israeli jails. Reports of horrific crimes committed against the female detainees have also surfaced. Despite inquiries, Israeli authorities have not responded. The Canadian province of Ontario is providing an additional funding of $20.5 million this year to assist faith-based and cultural groups in combating incidents of hate. The initiative will particularly focus on Jewish and Muslim communities. This funding initiative supplements the initial allocation of $12.5 million. The previous funding has already been allocated to 1,400 organizations through the government's anti-hate security and prevention grant program. Ontario Citizenship and Multiculturalism Minister Michael Ford says Ontarians have witnessed a disturbing increase in anti-Semitic and Islamophobic acts in the recent weeks. He says hate has no place in Ontario. Eligible groups can access grants up to $20,000 to bolster the security of community facilities synagogues, mosques, schools, and child care centers. They can employ security personnel and cameras to protect these spaces from acts of graffiti and vandalism. Organizations that have previously received grants are also eligible to apply for additional funding. And in related news, the government of Alberta, Canada will provide financial support to Islamic and Jewish faith-based schools to help increase security measures. The initiative comes after an increase in hate-motivated crimes throughout Canada following Israel's war in Palestine. Alberta's public safety minister, Mike Ellis, says it is very important to eliminate harassment and vandalism in schools and places of worship. Eligible schools can seek funding for physical patrolling, training, and upgrading security equipment such as cameras. The amount of funding varies based on the school's security needs. In addition to financial support, Alberta sheriffs will patrol faith-based schools. Renowned Spanish actress Penelope Cruz has taken to Instagram demanding an immediate ceasefire in Gaza, echoing the sentiments of activists world over. Cruz, previously criticized for her support of Gaza in 2014, is describing her stance as a promoter of peace. Another prominent Hollywood name, Angelina Jolie, has also recently condemned Israel's aggression in Gaza. She has referred to Gaza as an open-air prison.
Jolie has condemned what she calls the deliberate bombing of a trapped population. She has called on the world leaders to act against complicity in these crimes. Celebrities such as Gigi Hadid, Susan Sarandon, Dua Lipa, Olivia Colman, Nicola Coughlin, and Ken Loach have also joined the chorus for Gaza's peace. Sean Bean, famously known for his iconic roles in Lord of the Rings and Game of Thrones, has also joined calls for solidarity with Palestine. Bean has been recently spotted in Vancouver, Canada in a pro-Palestine protest. Multiple petitions and pleas for a ceasefire continue to emerge from the entertainment industry in solidarity with Palestinian civilians. Thank you for watching. Our news is produced by Muslim Network TV, which is a not-for-profit organization. We need your support for donations. Please scan the QR code on our broadcast or visit muslimnetwork.tv to donate now, so we can continue to amplify the voices of Muslims in Canada and abroad.